This is a lecture for root locus design, PID compensator, proportional integral and derivative. So basically, PID control design consists of three gains, proportional, integral and derivative, where the compensator transfer function for PID is based on these three gains, proportional K1, integral K2, and derivative k3 so the design procedure of PID controller is based on this few requirements the first one is transient response where we need to evaluate performance of uncompensated system to determine how much improvement in transient response is required the next step is design the PD controller where um, the PD controller need to meet the transient response specification for this one, the design includes the zero location and the loop gain. After that, um, we need to simulate the system to be sure all requirements have been met and redesign if the simulation shows that requirements have not been met from the PD controller design. The next step is based on the steady state requirement. For this one, we need to evaluate performance of uncompensated systems to this to determine how much improvement is required. The next one is design PI controller to yield the required steady state error. The following step is PID gains. In these steps, we need to determine the gains K1, K2, and K3. And the last one is we need to simulate the system to be sure all requirements have been met and re redesign the PID controller if simulation shows that requirements has, have not been met. This is an example uh, for PID controller design. So based on this trans, uh, block diagram, we need to design a PID controller so that the system can operate with a peak time that is two-thirds of that of the uncompensated system at 20% overshoot and with steady state error for a step input. So first, evaluate the uncompensated system operating at 20% overshoot. So from 20% overshoot, we determine the damping ratio 0.456. Using the value of gain k 121.5, we can determine the dominant poles of this uncompensated system which is equal to minus 5.415 plus J10.57. The next one is uh, find the desired system's dominant pole which is this one using the given key. And then we can uh, proceed with the design PD compensator. After we design the PD compensator, we proceed with the design of PI controller and the last one is we determine the PID gains of proportional K1, integral K2 and derivative K3. So the first step is evaluate the performance of the uncompensated system to determine how much improvement in Trajan response is required. <clears throat> From the dominant pole given using the gain K, 121.5 the dominant pole is this one so based on this sigma d and omega d value first we can determine the peak time of the uncompensated system which is 0.297 back to the design requirement that the peak time is two-thirds of the uncompensated system so we calculate the new peak time value, two-thirds of the peak time from the uncompensated system. So this is the new peak time value. From this one, you can determine the new omega d. Then based on theta d, which is theta d has been determined using the damping ratio value, we determine this new sigma d value. Based on this new sigma d and omega d value, we determine the new dominant pole values, which is this one. Second step is design the PD controller first to meet the transient response specification. So this one, you need to include the zero location and the loop gain. So this is based on the new dominant pole. So we plot pole and zero map 
based on the overloop transfer function, we have three poles, negative three, negative six, and negative ten, and also one zero negative eight. This is the location of the new dominant pole minus eight point thirteen plus j fifteen point eight seven. So from this one, we need to determine each angle from each poles and zero, and then using this equation, the summation of theta zero minus the summation of theta pole equal to hundred eighty degree. We include z c. In this diagram, what we don't know the location of z c, but we include the theta z c in this equation. By doing this, you can determine the theta z c. And using this equation, we can determine the location of z c for P D controller first. So the next step is simulate the system and redesign if the simulation of PD controller shows that requirement have not been met. This has been done using MATLAB. This is the PD controller. Sorry, this is the PD controller, the light green. The black one is the uncompensated system. Okay, the next step is design the PI controller to yield the required steady state error. For this one, we pick for PI controller ZC that close to origin for this case I choose 0.5 or actually it is negative 0.5 and PC at origin so this is the transfer function for PI controller and if we combine PID controller we get this transfer function for whole PID so we combine the PID and uncompensated system to produce PID compensated open loop transfer function. So this is ZC from PD controller. This is ZC for PI controller. This is original zero. This four is the ori uh, this three is the original uh, poles, and this is PC for PI controller. Next. Step is determine the gains K1, K2, and K3. So from the compensated PID transfer function, okay, this one, we know that, okay, from the PID transfer function, we know that this is the transfer function, so we equalize with the PID controller formula. So based on this one, we can determine K3 first, which is equal to 4.6. And then for this one, this is K1 over K3, which is equal to 56.45. And based on this one, we can determine K1. And the last term is K2 over K3, which is equal to 27.98, where we can determine K2. So all the proportional Derivative, integral and derivative gains for PID controller are determined. So, the next step is simulate the system to be sure all requirements have been met. So, this is including the ZC for PED. This is for PD compensated. And the last one, this is for PID, include ZC from PED. ZC from PI and also uh, PC for PI, including the original reals, real poles and real zero from open loop and compensated transfer function. So this is a simulation result for PID system compared to uncompensated system where PID controller have um, improved the peak time by two thirds and also um, the steady state error for step input. That's all for PID controller design. Thank you very much.